Hi guys, better late than never, I do apologise. Um, first and foremost, I'm speaking to two cameras, just got loads of things set up. If I sound a bit echoey to you, I do apologise. Um, basically, um, in a study and it's, it is a bit echoey. Um, <clears throat> if you're watching on uh, YouTube, obviously welcome to another video. If you're watching on Instagram, welcome to a uh, Insta Live, basically. So today we are going to go live with a special guest and it's going to be our first podcast. Basically, this is going to be turned into a YouTube video and ultimately into a podcast. Um, they're going to be called Peak Performance Podcasts or PPR Podcasts. And like I say, we're going to be doing more of these in the future um, from people in motorsports to people also um in kind of car the car scene so car vloggers i've got a lot of friends in the industry a lot of friends in the kind of car scene and into car vlogging so i'm going to get those guys on and i'm also going to get lots more motorsport uh, people on as well today i'm just going to wait till um i get an uh, a, a request to go live with this person is going to be our first podcast ever and we are so so happy to announce that we are going to be having our first guest who's going to be on is going to be Sarah Moore Sarah Moore Racing so um if you don't know who she is I'm going to talk to you a lot about uh you know her career what who she is what she does we're going to learn a little bit more about her because obviously she's going to be on and I'm going to ask her questions questions from myself questions from people I know questions from our subscribers and followers and yeah if um if you've got any questions if we have enough time i will read out your questions as well but i'm going to try and go live with sarah now hello sarah, sarah. How how you? Right? i'm not bad i'm not bad how are you yeah not bad what are you, what are you drinking you got a cup of tea on the go or a bit of I've got, i got a coffee but of course right. with it being christmas i, I topped it up with baileys Oh, nice. Just awesome. it's oh, that's happy days. I've got a beer. I've got a beer. <laughs> and this is, I actually, I, this is going to be my, I've just explained to some of the people who are watching, who potentially will be watching on YouTube, potentially the people who are watching on Instagram live. Um, this is going to be made into a podcast. It's our first official podcast, Peak Performance Podcast or PPR Podcast. Um, it's kind of inspired by loads of people's podcasts. It's getting more and more popular these days. And one of my favourite podcasts is one, of my favourite TV programmes called Entourage, and they always start by cracking open a beer. They're a very American, and they'll crack up, nice. crack, crack, crack open a beer. And they've, I never heard this before, but when they crack it open, it does this. Oh, shit, that went up. That <laughs> <laughs> they crack it open, or just before they crack it open, they say Irish crickets, and apparently that's something. I don't know where it comes from, probably Ireland, I presume, but <laughs> Irish crickets. So I'm cracking open one. I've got a few ready, lined up. Um, but I do like the idea of coffee and Baileys. That ain't a bad, that ain't a bad yeah. sound. It's, it's the only what? alcohol I have left in the house. So. Oh, happy days. Yeah, no problem. It's got, that's it. Sometimes it gets to that point, doesn't it? It's on the dregs and you've got to like, just pick up what you've got. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Until shopping day and then you're all right. Shopping day, especially over <laughs> Christmas, everyone's going to be drinking loads. Well, unless you don't drink, of course. <laughs> Weirdly, that was going to be one of my questions. So you've confirmed and answered that, really. So you, you, do, you do have a little bit of a tip then every now and again. Oh yeah, definitely. I mean, I'm I'm a Guinness drinker, and obviously Guinness awesome. is quite heavy. So uh, during the during the race season, I tend to stay off the Guinness. Yeah. Uh, unless I'm celebrating any uh, any trophies or anything like that. But um, yeah. yeah, I tend to stay off the Guinness and, and leave it till kind of the off season, really. But yeah, I do I do like uh, the odd drinks. So. Yeah, good stuff. Yeah, there's nothing wrong with it. I think, like I say, we'll probably talk about other things. It's not just alcohol, but obviously you know things in in, in your sport and your industry and whatnot and. Yeah, um, I'm not kind of the level that you're at, but just a bit background to, to me as well. Obviously, some people will know, or our followers will know, I race as well, but definitely not at the level Sarah is. And I'll explain more because I've won championships in things that I've raced in, but, um, and I've done carts and all of that. But just the ability you've got, I'm going to explain and go through some of kind of your um, career as such and under, uh, try and make people understand your you know, background and actually how good you are. Um, 
I know it's hard for you to hear like people blowing <laughs> the sun the sunshine up your ass. I don't mind it when people are talking about myself. Like <laughs> but but you know what I mean it's hard. You, you, I know you're humble. I I I've known you not seriously well but relatively well for a number of years. And um, what I would say is if people don't follow and support Sarah, please do. Um, when I get to the end of this, and even now, I'll give links in the bio uh, in my YouTube, in Insta, wherever I can to um, Sarah and where you can kind of go to follow her, you know, her different um, socials and stuff like that as well. Um, I honestly think uh, wholeheartedly, one, you're an outstanding athlete and, and driver. Uh, you almost, I still think a bit of an unsung hero and I'll explain why. But more than anything, Sarah, you're actually a really, really awesome person. So honestly, people, please don't follow um, Sarah before we carry on. Or, or sorry, no, after. after <laughs> um, and let me kind of like, you know, talk through some stuff. I'm going to kind of go through different things, ask you some questions. Some are from me, some are from friends, some are from uh, subscribers and followers. Obviously, I know roughly I'm going to try and stick to somewhere around an hour. If we're less brilliant, if we're over, sorry, <laughs> um, but we'll see what we can do. Um, if there's some stuff that we don't like, I can always edit them out when it comes to the podcast and the YouTube. Um, if there's something you don't want to answer, <coughs> just cough, cough and do something like that. I don't know. But you said you're pretty much up for anything. So, um, yeah, let's basically start. So, Sarah, Sarah Moore, Sarah Moore Racing. Um, you're 28 years of age and you race. And uh, that's basically all I'm going to give to start off with. So, you're a racing driver. You do a bit of sim racing. Um before we carry on, actually, is there, is there any socials that you want to kind of plug? Is there any, like, links or anything like that? I mean, if, if, you, if you remember them afterwards, I'm going to put them in my bio in YouTube anyway. So if you can think of anything you want to shout out just to start off with, by all means. Uh, I think I, the main one I use, really, to be honest, is Instagram. Um, I think that's yeah. the one people use these days. Not a fan of Twitter. I do have Twitter, but I'm not a fan of Twitter. Uh, yeah, same. And uh, I do have Facebook, um, but you'll find me under Sarah Moore Racing under all of them. So Yeah, awesome. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll put the links in the bio to all of those as well anyway. Right. I'm going to ask you some different things other than motorsport before we start. So really snapshot. If you can't think of them, I will answer something, my, you know, what I think and of my own. So first of all, first of all, what is your favourite song, Sarah? Oh, God, that's a difficult question. I know. I'll turn you on the spot. <laughs> um, it's got to be pink, but yeah. I couldn't tell you exactly which one. The pink, yeah. yeah. So that yeah. goes on to the other one. So I was going to ask you who's your favourite artist. Is she your favourite artist? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Then, yeah. yeah, she's, she's produced, produced some puck of songs, so I, no, I appreciate that. That's good. Favourite food? Oh, favourite food. Um, snacky or. Yeah, it's, it's not snacky, maybe, and, and your kind of meal, evening meal, something. Uh, I think my my favourite meal is probably spaghetti bolognese. Yeah, nice. made spaghetti bolognese. Um, in terms of snacks, I don't know. It's difficult. Cheese, chocolate, probably chocolate. To be fair. Yeah. yeah. Nice. No good answers. Good answers. Okay. Aside from racing, I'd say because obviously it's obvious. Hobbies. What what other do you have? Any other hobbies that you kind of are into and yeah do external of kind of you know your race and stuff like that do you have any hobbies um i don't have any anything else to kind of do outside of racing other than work <laughs> um, yeah, yeah i mean I, I used to work play football um so i am quite a, a big football fan um so i do watch quite a bit of football um also watch uh Bala play hockey so i've got quite into hockey um over the past five years or so so yeah outside of racing i'd probably say they're the, the other two things that i'm kind of into Cool. Yeah. Favourite drink? What's your favourite drink? Not uh, alcoholic and alcoholic. Alcoholic? Um, it's got to be Guinness. Um, mm -hmm. Only, obviously, from Ireland. Um, that's the, the best place to get it from. Um, Non-alcoholic, uh, got to be Yorkshire tea. Nice. Yeah. To be fair, like I've, I've been there a few times. I've never gone there and had Yorkshire tea, but I do like Yorkshire tea, really. I've had it, and it's nice. Yeah. It's just very different to a normal tea, but... Um, yeah, no, great, great answers. I love Guinness as well. So if you ever want to have a fight with me, we'll we'll go somewhere all together, and we'll have to do that another time. Or if I see you at a race circuit, um, obviously off season or after you celebrate a win or a podium. Exactly. <laughs> okay, uh, you did touch on something, and I have to say, although I did um, give you, you know, 
big props. I have to say, you support a shocking team. <laughs> shocking team. To, to be, to be think, fair... The same is said about your team, isn't it? Go on, who do you support? Who do you support? <laughs> yeah. I support Liverpool. I know, do you know, I, I can't say nothing, can I? <laughs> Shit, excuse my French, we're, we're crap. But, but, but your awesome other half supports... The, apparently, the apparently she supports a good team. I mean, yeah. I, I Carla's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. So, I love Carla. I, I kind of actually like, like Carla a little bit more in the US. The results, the results speak for themselves, don't they, to be fair. So. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah, we're crap. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah we're, we're, we're crap. To be honest with you, I can't argue it, can I? I can't just, I can't say too much. So I'm You've gonna not really that. got anything to fire back at me at the no. moment. No, let's move on. <laughs> <laughs> um, so another thing I'm going to say, actually, with talking about Carla, just want to say um, congrats in advance. Obviously, I know you're, you're, you're getting married, I think, on the 8th of January. Uh, so congratulations on that. Absolutely awesome. Um, I follow Carla as soon as I found out she was obviously Man United supporter. So, and obviously you get my blessing because she's just awesome because she supports Man United. Yeah. So, but no, from what I uh, you know gather and I've seen of Carla, she looks awesome, and you're a great couple. So it's good to see, and congratulations for that. And uh, yeah, I hope it goes really, really well. Um, are you allowed to disclose where you're going uh, for your honeymoon if you're allowed to go very far? <laughs> yeah. I haven't. We haven't actually booked anything yet. No. Uh, because we're not really sure what's going to happen with COVID, so uh, yeah, no. yeah, it would be probably a last-minute decision. Um, but, I mean, I already said to her, if, if we can't go for a honeymoon for anyone, then uh, she can come to one of the nice races in one of the nice countries that I'm sure I'll get to race at. Yeah, no, definitely. Did she ever come with you, actually? Has she ever, has she ever travelled before with you? I know it was obviously a bit hard, wasn't it? Because it was uh, effectively most of, certainly the last season, was kind of really under a lot of restriction, wasn't it? So it must have been, yeah, it must have been nearly impossible, I guess. So probably hasn't, I, I presume. Uh, I mean, obviously pre-COVID, she went to a lot of my races. Um, yeah, because yeah, I think I saw at Brands, I think when we yeah, saw the yeah. finale race, I think, uh, yeah, yeah, Brands, cool. yeah, 2019, yeah, she did that one. Um, yeah. This year, I mean, COVID, the Formula One weekend has been behind the doors um, or restricted fans. Um, so she they actually came to Silverstone, um, but those that went to Silverstone, um, they'll know that obviously the paddocks were kept completely separate to uh, fans. So yeah, I unfortunately think family um, or Carla are all over the race weekend. So, yeah, yeah, they were they were there to support. So. Yeah, we were, well, I say it's one of those things because it, it goes all around the world essentially. It's quite hard to follow other than following the awesome coverage coverage it is on um, Channel Four, which is great. Um, I've obviously tried to follow as much as I can, but when I kind of really warm to something, I will try and go to races, but obviously because they're all around the world, it was impossible. But I'd love to come and see you race more, and obviously hopefully um, maybe they'll do more rounds and perhaps they'll do some different rounds in the UK as well. But I'll certainly try and support you in any, any way I can, so it'd be great to see. I absolutely adore W Series, by the way. I'm one of these people who is in the camp of absolutely loving it, and I'm kind of always forever trying to tell people they need to start watching it. The racing has been unbelievable it's been so good and weirdly as much apart from the weekend that's just got on that we've seen that's caused all anarchy um the racing in general i think in w series is far better to watch so um yeah it's it's, it's awesome people if you haven't watched it go watch w series it's awesome um, and actually i'm a master ambassador one for females in racing and two I sit on that fence where I think it's a really, really good thing. And I, I do have friends that are on the fence and I've got friends who don't agree with it. And it's a, it's a funny subject, isn't it? And I'm sure you will know people. Uh, I know some racing drivers that have expressed certain opinions of it also. Um, and I've heard, you know, uh, high, you know, people who are quite high up in the motorsport that have said, you know, good, bad, and not so good. But for me, I think it really does encourage, mo you know, women in motorsport. And I think, Ultimately, it will lead to females racing with, um, you know, guys. And there's absolutely no reason why it can't happen and why it shouldn't, because there's no reason why a female wouldn't be as good or better in certain aspects than a, than a male driver. So I think it's ridiculous. And I, I just think, for me, it's doing wonders for the sport. And I think it's great. So I'm really, really pleased to see it happening. Um, and you guys, you guys are doing such a good job, especially, to, like I say, essentially the Brit drivers are just 
representing so so well so yeah well done for that and uh yeah so um what i will go on to obviously raise a little bit more um you have obviously a grade a r license um and you kind of I actually I want to say as well, and I've always said this to my friends, I've, I've followed you for a long time, probably longer than you realise. It's really, really strange. I remember uh, so long ago, probably even before je um, Genetics and when you were getting your race licence, I can't remember where I was, but I saw you race. And I was, you were one of these people I said to my friends, watch out for, and I think you'll be a really good driver. Because I, I see things in drivers, I think, and I, I, you were one of them people, so... I just, you know, you've proved me right. So <laughs> thank you for that. But um, yeah, obviously you've had a really, really good career. Um, so Jeanette Juniors, yeah. So many people that have gone through Jeanette Juniors and who have, are so noteworthy, people like Dino Zamparelli, you've got Tom Ingram, obviously BTCC, Seb Morris, GTs, Jack Miss Mitchell, GTs, Jamie Caroline, um, and then other noteworthy um, people like Charlie Robinson, who's, who's now like, a Jeanette factory driver in LMP1, which is obviously, you know, these things are like, you know, rockets with wheels, you know. Um, Jamie Chadwick, two times W Series winner. Lando Norris, he's, he's pretty good. <laughs> um, and Seb, Seb uh, Prio, they, you've, they've all kind of done very good things and Jeanette all won them. And you've done the same. And I think you won by 16 points, didn't you? Um, I think it was in originally. Um... Think, and I ended up getting. Um, so I think I actually only won by six points in the end. Oh, okay. So, the, the, yeah. so it's mad. It, it's mad. But that is that is incredible. So yeah, fair play for that. And obviously, lots of different you know things you've done as well. Brick car endurance championship champion also 2018, and then you got into obviously W Series in 2019, where you finished eighth out of 20, which obviously effectively you have got the elite of you know motorsport women in that series you've got 20 drivers all around the world who have got incredible backgrounds um and i think you won't you'll only know if you look and study what those girls have done and how their route to where they've got to has been you know gotten i suppose um and it's insane so eight out of 20 is incredible in your first year in w series um especially not necessarily driving i know you've had experience with carts and you haven't definitively only done like a lot of open wheel championships as such, have you? So it's, you know, a bit different. Jamie Chadwick, maybe a little bit more. Um, um, Alice has obviously, Alice Powell's obviously done uh, a lot and had that career kind of that way. So for yourself, um, I think it's just incredible. It just shows that how much you can adapt to whatever you drive in and that, you know, when someone's fast, really they can pretty much adapt to anything. Um, and obviously then going on to 2019, fifth in the championship with two i think two dnfs uh, two non-finishes uh there or was one i can't remember mm -hmm. this or i i it was certainly it was certainly i think realistically if you would have had one extra half decent finish which realistically there's two of those rounds where they're not a, a fault of your own and i can see that categorically you would have been fourth there's, there's there's no doubt about it um the top three were really really you know up there getting their points and it's kind of not a surprise we can understand Jamie Chadwick you know um was probably always going to be up there Alice Powell was always always going to be up there and they're always going to compete and um Kim Alinen was incredible as well and uh, she's just amazing as well but to be in the mix there and it's, I think I already said to you the other day I think uh, you know you always want to progress as a driver. I can see, you know, obviously all going well and you don't know, different things change, different drivers come in. You've got a great chance of, you know, potentially coming third, getting, you know, in the top three in the championship. That is incredible. It, it's, like I say, it's pinnacle motorsport, it, certainly, um, you know, for yourself. And, and going forward, you can just, it gives you a platform to potentially go even further. So it's incredible. Um, Tell me a bit bit more about W Series and how you found it and um, I guess what it's kind of brought to you and um, what opportunities it's brought perhaps as well. Um, w Series was kind of brought to my attention through um, an that um, has worked with my family team. I've worked with my, my brother specifically. Um, I got a lot of people um, who 
are involved in the championship now or, or you know, decided not to be involved in the championship. Uh, I had my, you know, my reasons why I think I was going to go down that route. Um, but then the reason why I did decide to go down that route, A, because I couldn't like Frank's mum and dad any longer. Um, you know, they his job of allowing me to race, you know, for, for certain years and being able to, um, you know, keep me racing. I couldn't rely on them forever. Um, and my ultimate goal um, in my career is to become, a, obviously, a professional racing driver, but I want to race a Le Mans for hours. And to do that, I needed to gain experience in cars that have got error. Uh, so for me, this was a perfect opportunity, the fact that I have to bring a budget to the season in the first place. Um, and obviously, the first season, we were on board with DTM, which in itself is, is absolutely amazing um, for us as drivers. Um, so the first 19, that was amazing. Uh, my sports car background, I, I loved watching the DTM cars. Um, and then obviously, uh, moving on to this year, um, yeah, that was a, a huge step up, um, you know, for W Series himself, part of, of Formula One, which is the pinnacle of, of racing. And so much for us as drivers in terms of um you know our following on social media um you know potential sponsors uh, and everything like that and um you know i'm so fortunate to be one of the drivers that have been given the opportunity to be a part of the w series and it's been tough um extremely tough especially in 2019 um but you know without those moments where you kind of hit rock bottom uh, you don't um you know you don't really feel um the the success so yeah, absolutely. No, and you touched on actually. I know you've got a family background. Your your um, family kind of work um, run Topworth um, Motorsport, I believe. And your your brother has a lot of background as well. Obviously, he was also a Geneta Junior um, champion, which a lot of people don't realise. And obviously, he's gone on to a lot of things, including I believe. And correct me if I'm wrong. Coming second at Le Mans in the twenty four. Uh, he did. Get a podium. Which, yeah. they, 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 I think he's done Le Mans twice. Which is which is incredible as well. So yeah, you obviously got a lot in your family, which is great. So you've got, I suppose, a lot to live up, live up to. You're certainly living up to that. So it's, it's it's brilliant. It's great to see. And obviously, you got a. Um, you're also the first driver to win in a series that formed part of the Tucker package, yep. which is awesome. And the first win in a mixed gender race as well which is awesome. It's awesome. You've got so many little things, brilliant, not little things, huge things. It's incredible. BRDC, Rise and Start, obviously I, I know of loads of loads of people that have got that as well. And when I say loads of people, a select few of incredible drivers that get that uh, amazing thing from the BRD, BRDC. So well done again for that as well. Um, some more questions, I guess, for you. Um, what advice would you give to someone getting into... Uh, someone's actually asked me this. Um, advice for someone getting into racing a lot later than usual in life, um, and someone that's not necessarily carted, but they still really want to make it. What advice would you have to that kind of person, perhaps who's only started racing in their 20s or something like that, um, and they're kind of just starting up? Um, it depends what kind of... You know, a lot of people now start with track. Um, they don't really want to go don't necessarily know how to actually race in line as such and you know you find people on track days making little errors whereas you don't tend to get that test days but um yeah i'd say you know either your track days or, or your test days um and to be honest uh, when you're starting off the type of car you go for doesn't matter as such uh you know for, for track day people that are just starting off i tend to go for Mazda MX-5, um, just because my personal preference is rear-wheel drive. Um, but, you know, Mazda MX-5 or a Clio, you know, something like, you know, get you learning the basics, um, you know, of, of how to get around a track safely. Um, and then once you've obviously learned how to get around safely, then you just learn your, your race craft from there. So, yeah, there's, there's a lot of different ways. I mean, you know, if you get, there's a lot of, you know, so many race teams out there now. Um, I'd always say start off at a club level. Um, mm -hmm. so you can learn, learn your race class um, to start off. But yeah, there's so many teams out there now that are willing to to help. Us, so. Yeah, definitely. And I, I agree. I think um, 
I could be brutal and sometimes say that I think some people have to manage expectations. That's, that's the realism of life. Um, how far do you want to go? How much natural raw ability have you got? Because some people have got a decent enough, a, a decent enough ability that will allow them to race, like say at a grassroots or a lower level, club level. Um, and some people have, I've seen people that have had a lot of raw talent and they've got involved in motorsport later in life and they can, you know, relatively go places. So it's a lot harder. And you know and I know it costs money a lot of the time as well. So you need either amazing sponsors or you you need rich parents or a lot of luck yeah. um, or both. <laughs> <laughs> But, but you know, it, it, it's lots of things. So you have to manage expectations, I think. Um, but, yeah, I, I, I echo what you say. There's so many race series out there. If you fancy it and you believe you're relatively fast and competent, get your race licence and go and find some of the race and set a budget and don't go over the top and just enjoy yourself. Um, I've raced in some crazy championships myself and uh, yeah, it's been good fun and um, a laugh. And at the same time, I've seen some of them people you were talking about that you even see on track days and they've just about got their race license and you see a few people and they're pretty scary out there. Yeah. But it's all fun and games. Weirdly going on to that, I'm going to go back to something I wanted to speak about. W series. Talk to me about the, 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 the accident, if you don't mind in spa, what, um, that was huge. What kind of goes through your mind when you have a crash like that, at, you know, near El Rouge and, you know, the speeds, especially in something like what you're in, with a kind of open top, it's got a roll bar, but, you know, they're incredibly safe, incredibly safe, I know, but what goes through your mind? What, if you don't mind me asking, it's, I don't want to bring back memories for you, because it's, I've been in some, I haven't been in any, any huge crashes, I've been in a few small crashes, but even then it still, it shakes you a little bit. What, talk me through that, if you don't mind, Sarah, how, what, you know, how did it unfold and what did you feel at that time? Um, it's weird because whenever people ask me that question, obviously, you know, it does bring back memories. Um, you know, I'm you know, I, going from a racing family, racing background, I've, I've raced since I was four years old. So, you know, I know that accidents happen and, and that's part of motorsport, but, um, it's more so kind of for my close friends and not so much my immediate family, but Carla, I know it, it affected Carla massively. Um, but it's weird because Spa for me, the accident at Spa, um, I've had crashes where I've come out feeling like mentally a lot, a lot worse. or just felt like it was a really bad crash. Whereas Spa, it was, yeah, the biggest crash of my career, but I didn't really think of it like that. You know, it's, it's a bit weird. Um, I can't put into words kind of, you know, how I feel about, about that crash compared to other crashes that I've had, because yeah, I, I felt the safest I've ever felt in, yeah. any car, in, in any car, which is, you know, it's a good thing um, in all yeah. fairness that's always a good thing but no in terms of the actual crash itself um to kind of rewind back to kind of how it started I, I suppose uh, I was the first driver out of the pit lane for qualifying um which was good which is what we always always kind of want to aim to be um especially bar because we knew that rain was coming so I wanted to be the first out of the box to try and get the the first you know the fastest lap in before the rain came um, and then I came out the the chicane um and it just started to rain and I could see it on my visor and my engineer said to me basically what I thought in my own head which we're gonna have to try and get a push up in um, because I think the rain's on its way um, and my tires weren't quite because the, the, the air temp was just so cold um, I'd not even done I think it was two laps um, but there was definitely not enough temp in my tires but you know I had to try and you know push to get um, so yeah, going um, up the start of Eau Rouge and I went over the curb on the left. And I think there was just, I mean, we still don't know to this day exactly what it was, but I think it was just water, still water in that curb. Um, so as soon as I loaded up the hill uh, to the right, obviously it just put it into a spin. Um, obviously me being the first driver there, I knew that everyone was following me because I'd already seen them in, the mir in my mirrors. Um, so yeah, the, the second I spun, um, I knew I was going to go into the wall because it is the fastest part of the circuit, well, the fastest corner of the circuit. Um, so I knew I was going to go in. So obviously I, I hit the tyre wall um, and then from that moment I kind of closed my eyes mm -hmm. uh, until everything had kind of gone silent, really. Um, and I think the most emotional part and the bit that always gets me when, when I talk about it is when I had opened my eyes and the first thing that I saw was the flowers that had been laid for Antoine across the side of the track. So 
that was that was the hardest thing for me. Um, and that that rethinking about that brings back the emotions. Um, but yeah. it was a moment I just thought, you know, I can feel everything, I can move everything, and you kind of, you know, you thank your lucky stars that you're okay um, when you see it like that, obviously. And then it was get me out of this car um, yeah. and, and checking you know, that all the other drivers were okay. So yeah, you know, it was the biggest crash of my career, and um, you know, like I said that moment does bring back the emotions. Um, but, you know, it just goes to show how, how strong the cars are um, these days compared to, you know, even, well, pre-Halo, if I'm honest. Um, the onboard video um, fr from Spa actually shows Abby Eaton's uh, wheel hitting, it hits the top of my head, um, but the Halo takes so much of the impact. Um, and if it wasn't for the Halo, um, I, I kind of compare it to, I mean, I don't know whether people remember Henry Surtees, but I compare it to uh, to Henry Surtees at Brands Hatch. Um, you know, if I had Halo, it would be a situation very similar to that, I think. Um, mm -hmm. So Halo is, is absolutely amazing. Yeah, no, definitely. Yeah, it's quite amazing. I, I, I must admit, just, just knowing you, you know, relatively well, again, um, I saw it happen. It, it was horrible to see. It was really, really, so hearing you say that as well makes me, me kind of get a bit like, you know, geez, it kind of gets me, you know. So, yeah, I'm glad you're okay. We all do, you know, we, anyone who's in motorsport do it, you know, for the love and we understand how dangerous it is, um, no matter what kind of car you're in, it's very, very dangerous. And, uh, yeah, it's a uh, testament to how good they're built. And, yeah, you don't think about it when you put that head, uh, that helmet on, you just get your visor down and you just go for it and you don't think about it. But it's, it's a dangerous game, but... We wouldn't have it any other way. We love it, don't we? It just feels good being out there. And I can imagine at your level, it just must be amazing. So, no, thanks for answering that. Um, okay, another thing I've been asked, um, what's been the best thing about W Series from your experience? Um, from my experience, um, I don't know. There's two things. Um, the friends that I've made, um, other females within the motorsport community, it's been amazing to me many females from many different countries, uh, but also the circuits that we've been to so far. Um, I've experienced circuits that I never even thought I would have, you know, been. So yeah, I'd say those are the, the two main things. Yeah, and that's incredible. And to be fair, that's a great answer, to be fair. I can understand that. Um, have you actually, just divulging from that, actually, I just thought of the question myself. Um, have you grown some friendships from there that you didn't have before? Have, um, both maybe from a foreign driver or an English driver. Have you got any friendships that have come out of W Series also? Yeah. Uh, weirdly enough, um, Alice Powell, uh, to be yeah. fair, I've known her since, you know, she started racing cars in, in Jeanette Juniors. She raced for my dad's team, but um, we kind of parted ways when she um, went into Formula Renault, I think it was. Um, she obviously um, left to go down that route and, I'd never really kind of spoke to her. I'd see her in passing and we'd say hi. Um, but W Series kind of brought us back together and, and brought back an old friendship. Uh, yeah, she's definitely, I'd say, best friend that I've kind of re recoupled with, I suppose. Um, yeah, but, but, Alice, Alice is awesome. I, I just love her. I think she's brilliant as well. You both of you two are awesome. And she's just so funny. Um, but yeah, and anyone else as well? Anyone else that's kind of a bit left field that you you, did, you just kind of met and gelled with or, or anything like that? To be honest, I, I don't think there's one of the W Series drivers that I, I can say I've not, you know, I've not become friends with. Um, we're all very, very closely knit. And yeah. it's a bit weird because a lot of people would think if you get 20 of them in, you know, together in one room, then they'd all become, you know, they'd be arguing, bickering, whatever. But, you know, we, we all want the same thing within, within yeah. most. Well, outside of motorsport, obviously, um, it's maybe a little bit different. But when we're all um, together on a race weekend, you know, we, we all want the same thing. All the helmets are on. Um, you know, we're all having a good laugh and a good giggle. So, yeah, you know, I, I, I've become friends with, you know, every, every driver within the W Series. That's awesome, to be fair. I think that shows, actually, not just for yourself. You can just see it. And I think that's brilliant. And uh, partly another reason why it's just such an awesome series. But it's great to see. Um, you definitely go hard, but, you know, leave it all there and it's, it's, it's great. great. No, brilliant. Um, okay, another question. What's your ultimate goal in motorsport? Do you have an ultimate goal? Is there something, you know, you can... Aim? Really, because I think, uh, you know, the further you get 
of motorsport or the longer you do motorsport for, um, you kind of realize really how difficult it is to, you know, achieve your, what may have been your ultimate goal when you were, I don't know, 14 year, years old or, or whatever it may be. Um, I think for me, after watching my brother race at Le Mans various times, that will always be my ultimate goal. Mm -hmm. Um, and kind of the, the dream goal as such but um, you know the goal really at the moment is just to get where um, you know I'm classed as a professional racing driver and I get paid to, to do what I love which obviously with with the W Series um, most of us drivers within that series I guess are classed as, as professional racing drivers now so. Awesome now good good answer and uh, yeah to be fair if, it, if anyone asked me I'd say probably the same I'd love to race at the Mon. it'd be just 24 hour Le Mans would be just dream goals, definitely. So um, everyone always expects someone to say, Formula One, I want to be a Formula One driver. Um, we have to be realistic. It's a uh, percentage is here, like a grain of sand. And yeah, of course, because we all like to do it and you, you would like to as well. And you never know, you never know. We might see a W Series champ eventually go into it. Who knows? But yeah, great, great goal. And I think that's definitely a really, really good one. Um, someone's asked, does pineapple belong on a pizza? No, no. Like, yeah, no, no, no. Yeah. <laughs> no. Um, yeah, yeah, I agree with that. I think there's still definitely people that think it, it should, so it's fine. It's fine. <laughs> their own. They're entitled uh, to their opinion, aren't they? You know. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> right, also, what, what is your favourite car around 50 kind of grand kind of mark, UK price? Ooh. What's your favourite car, money, no objects? So two things. Um, my favourite car is always going to be BMW. I'm pretty much growing up BMWs. Um, so I don't know exactly which model. Um, I'm quite into the M4 at the moment. Um, yeah, I just so, reviewed one of them. I just reviewed one. Um, literally, it just came out this weekend. Just gone. Um, are you talking about the one with the funny snout at the front? No, not the new model. Before one before? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, driven both the. The, the newer one is a much better driving car, even though the, the old, yeah, the old one's like a bit more wild, which mm. is kind of awesome in its own right, but the, the newer version is so much more competent and has such a, so much more of a better chassis. Mm. Subjective, but subjective style on the front, it's a bit odd, I don't overly mm. like it at all, yeah. but the rest of the car is actually really good looking, but it's, um, the car is incredible. It, mm. uh, Incredible, um, but the, the other one is still a really, really good car. And uh, no, I'm, I'm a good, I'm a big fan of BMWs. They just make really good driving machines. So, yeah. what about money, no objects? Oh, um, I would go classic on this one. Um, okay, that's cool. Yeah, classic car fan. Um, that's it. Probably uh, an E30 M3. They're like crazy money now, to be fair, aren't they? I think they're around the 100k mark now. E E30 M3 Evos, crazy money. So, just going to open another beer, Irish cricket. <laughs> Still went over my uh, laptop a little bit. Um, how's the coffee going down? Oh, the coffee, the coffee's gone. I'm, I'm back yeah. on the water now. So, oh, okay. I've got, I've got right. water, but I haven't drunk any of it. <laughs> it's going down really well. Um, no, awesome. No, okay. This is an interesting one. I think you touched on it already. Front wheel drive, rear wheel drive, or all wheel drive. What's your platform of choice? Um, I've always, always been a, a real wheel drive person. I, that's what I grew up with. Um, I have dibbled with a, a bit of front wheel drive. Um, and I, I do highly, highly recommend the, the John Keep Works uh, Mini. I think it's a fantastic race car. I don't know about a road car, but a fantastic race car. Um, but yeah, I, I, my heart will always be with, with rear wheel drive, definitely. Yes, yeah, same. Good, good answer. I, definitely my platform of choice. Also, I'm the same. Love rear wheel drive. I've got an insanely high power Mark IV Toyota Supra. I don't know if you've seen it, Sarah. It's crazy. So, it's a. It was about 800 horsepower. Soon going to be 1300 horsepower. Ish. Wow. So in rear wheel drive, but there's a lot of clever, sophisticated things on there to do things. But I won't bore you with that. It's a. That's a long story. So, and <laughs> I haven't got it back yet. It's, it's soon to be back in my hands. So, but it's all. <laughs> I'm the same, four-wheel drive man, definitely. Uh, what race series do you fancy having a go at? Grassroots, elite, anything. What would you, apart from the Mon, because you already mentioned it, is there anything you've seen, weird, wonderful, silly, stupid, that you, or across anything, rally, is there anything that tickles your fancy that you think, love to have a go at that? Um, to be fair, um, 
I've always wanted to kind of just have a bit of fun doing some auto testing. Um, I've, I kind of did a little bit of it when I was in my junior, junior days, um, just to kind of learn control more than anything else. Um, but yeah, I'd love to pick some random, crazy, stupid car and just go do some, probably a mini actually, um, just go do some, some auto testing. Yeah, I think it would be good. I'll have to get one and we'll, we'll, uh, we'll, pick, we'll mess around in one or something. But yeah. I definitely have to get a team with you another time, definitely. Uh, also, no, good good answer. Um, okay, this is an interesting one. I think I know the answer, but not everyone necessarily does. What is your day job? Or what is your day job? Um, well, pre-COVID, um, I was doing instructing driver coaching, um, and then COVID hit, and I became a delivery driver. So... I have now. I have now quit. I quit about a month ago now. I think it is. Um, but I, I have been a, a delivery driver for kind of a year and a half. Um, which throughout lockdown, it was actually a very, very rewarding job. Um, mm, yeah, very, yeah. Weirdly, weirdly enough, um, and it was wasn't very nice during winter. Um, but no, it's a, a very rewarding job. Um, but yeah, I I, uh, I left that. Um, I think it was two weeks after I got back from America, actually. Um, and now I'm kind of back to trying to push the the coach. Uh, an instructing side and, and get some more kind of private clients um heading into next year so yeah awesome no i think that's that's really good that's the reason why i wanted, wanted to ask it because i knew of kind of what you did do and it's a bit like um it kind of makes people aware of actually how hard it is to just you know be pure professional make you know complete money or enough to kind of live and do everything you want um, and it is very much um, the case in a lot of places, you know, series is even W series, is so high end. Alice Powell, she's a plumber, isn't she, by trade? She does a lot of plumbing still with her dad, which I just think is awesome. And I think, you know, you, you doing what would most people would call is a relatively normal job. You do, you know, it, it's, it's reality. And you end up and you're on a W series package that supports Formula One. It's, it's, it's just... But it's reality. It kind of allows people to realise, um, you know, a bit more about reality. That being said, where you are in the game in terms of, you know, you know, W Series and your racing, you deserve to kind of be professional. You deserve to have, you know, a professional career in it. I mean, to be doing what you do and to be having the results you've had, you definitely deserve, you know, to be able to, you know, sack in, you know, the day job and do <laughs> this full time. So. I'll definitely push, you know, anything I can, for, you know, for you. And, and, you know, if you ever want to instruct me, I'm going to continue till I'm wrinkly and got a walking stick. So um, I will, you know, I'm one of these guys that just, I'm aware of my own ability. And I know from karting and my championships, I've done well. I'm a good quality racer and I'm a decent driver. However, I'm humble enough to actually go, do you know what? When you get someone who's just a different level to you, you have to understand that people can there's other people that will make you learn so you definitely you know i i don't care whether i won two championships or not and i've done car and done very well you would definitely take me on as a driver and and that saying something so you know fair play to you and definitely what you do is just incredible and you're brilliant in what you do so i'll, I'll obviously shout and plug um, as much as i can um how what the other question i was going to ask is have you got sponsors sorted for 2022 uh, 2021 uh, 2021 2022 yeah you don't really want sponsors for like a <laughs> yeah. sponsor me for christmas and <laughs> next year yeah um, 2022 um, are you after any more sponsors and where would they need to go to connect and get involved really um, at the moment, I don't have any sponsors. Um, obviously, for those that have followed my racing for this year, uh, will have known I've, I have automatically qualified for W Series next year. So I will be returning to the W Series next year, um, aiming for that top three, where I kind of feel like I really could have been this year. Um, so, yeah, outside of that, um, I was really, really hoping um, and still kind of in some talks um, of trying to get some budget uh, do some test days um pre-season uh, i mean you know I'd, I'd love to go out and do um asian f3 um but to get them to do that obviously is a little bit harder um you know you've got travel involved as well and obviously with the covid situation the way that it that it is um at the moment with the restrictions coming back in uh, i think it might be a little bit tricky to try and do that but um no you know if anyone does want to get in touch um the best way is probably through my social media. Um, I think my email is attached to my Instagram, so um, the easiest way to get <laughs> Instagram. Um, yeah. 
Mega, yeah. I say if there's um, if we were doing better and we were bigger, a bigger company ourselves, we I definitely um, sponsor. And to be fair, if there's any way I can, I definitely will because I'm a massive ambassador for your driving you and the person you are and everything. So, but I've just kind of gone over things and just if you are watching this on YouTube or anything, whatever you're watching on, um, honestly. The, you know, like I say, this goes on Channel Four. It supports, you know, the Formula One package. Has that been confirmed for next year? Um, so, so, do you know, or is it, if you're allowed to say it, I don't know. Uh, Formula One, I believe so. Yes. Um, obviously, they haven't confirmed the dates yet, but Formula yeah. One, yeah. Um, I don't think anything TV wise has been confirmed yet. But yeah. So you know, the, certainly if it carries on the way it's going, you'd expect it to only get better. So for the platform to put, you know, you know things out on just the fact that you know you're racing you can't always shout about sponsors all the time because you don't get you know loads and loads of air time to be able to say that but certainly in anywhere else you will go you will talk about sponsors and thank them etc and that's how the game kind of works so um, if anyone can you know sponsor and get involved in sponsoring um, Sarah in any way shape or form it, it's about as good as it gets this side of Formula 1 guys so get in touch um, sponsor Sarah and uh yeah, like I say, um, I'm a massive fan, friend for life, and uh, like I say, I really, really appreciate your time as well. And uh, I'm just before we go, I'm going to just check see if there's any questions. Probably some stupid questions, fun questions. If there isn't, no worries. I'm going to scroll down and see. There's a lot, of, a lot of people being on to be fair, which is really, really good. Let's see if we've got any questions. There probably hasn't been because I kind of haven't said or asked. Someone said no Guinness, Sarah. <laughs> I disagree. I love Guinness. Um, I've got this on the stand, so this is where, um, yeah, someone said, who, oh, who do you, who, someone said, who do you support, Sarah? We've gone over that. Yeah. Let's not talk about that again. Best. Um, <laughs> oh, uh, someone says, I want to go to Dublin, so do I, and I've heard, I've never been, and I've heard the Guinness taste much better, because it's something to do with the water, isn't it, or, or something? Yeah, it just, it just doesn't travel well, um, so, yeah. you know. Like anything, I suppose it's always gonna taste better in the in the country that it's, it originates from. So yeah, yeah. yeah. I've, I've heard loads of people corroborate the same thing. So yeah, I'm I'm definitely gonna need to go to um, Dublin. Um, w Series is brilliant and so good to see Sarah and the British girls doing so well. Definitely, loads of people been on. Alice Powell's been on. Hello, oh. Alice. <laughs> loads of nice things about you. Don't worry. <laughs> Um, yeah, we've had some awesome people on actually that kind of support and um, follow the channel. It's really, really good. I'm sure plenty or most have come from your your side, which is brilliant as well. Um, testimony to the FIA and safety, safety elements. That's obviously regarding the spa crash. Um, definitely, someone says wrong. I don't know what that was. It would have been relevant at the time we were talking about the question. Um, uh, let's have a look. Uh, a favourite? Oh, yeah, I haven't asked that. Favourite racetrack? Ooh, um, favourite racetrack ever is the Nordschleife, by far. Mm -hmm. um, other than that one, uh, I'd probably say Spa, even though it knocked me a little bit this year. But yeah, Spa, yeah. We, I mean, we've got, we're blessed with amazing UK circuits as well, aren't we? We've got so many amazing circuits in the UK, but um, I've actually raced at Spa as well. So I, I reiterate how amazing Spa is. It's incredible. Uh, certainly haven't raced anything as far as yours up there, but um, it, I've actually raced the ones around there, but it's bloody amazing. A, a lot of fun. It's so good. There was 120 cars going around there at the same time, and there was four different four different categories. So we were the second slowest. Um, there was there was um, there was these two CVs that were really slow that were dangerous. Then there was bike engine two CVs which were really quick. They were in the upper class and you have to just watch your mirrors for them all the time and um and then there was um the dutch c1s which were modified c1s and then us so it's brilliant so you had so many different differentials of speed it was brilliant and uh i did my first stint was two hours then i did a three hours and then three hours oh yeah i was i was dead to the world i was a zombie i come out there's a video of me somewhere and i was I thought after the second session, I thought I was going to die. Literally, I thought I was going to die. And there was all you know what spas like if you because you've probably been loads of times as well racing different things. But um, 
we had we had like thunder, lightning, hail, <laughs> rain, snow, everything, and it was mental. That and fog at the top of the circuit. And there was one point. It was really funny, right? I was two hours fifteen into my three hour stint, and it was one thirty in the morning. This is my second three hour stint, and I remember feeling really tired, and it was so foggy. And you you get to a point where there's muscle memory, and you do learn, and you you almost can learn your way around the circuit. So it's so foggy, I was kind of like, yeah, 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 yeah. And then all of a sudden, I was like, so corner, corner, no, oh, grass, shit, curb. <laughs> and I was like this. And it was like, and then all of a sudden, it was like, it was like um, you couldn't, cause it, you couldn't see it going on about five, ten minutes in front. Oh. All of a sudden, it was like, barrier, no, this way, back on the circuit, boom, 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 boom. And then I was like, and then I was like, like this. Yeah. I was woken up. I was like, that's fine, it's woke me up. <laughs> but it woke me up, but it's brilliant. So spas are awesome. I've yeah. never raced around North Life. Obviously, it's very hard to race around Nervo Green because you need all licenses and stuff like that. But I've done uh, Tourist Life, which is the tourist laps. And yeah. it's um, petrifying. It just, um, it's one of those, I, I, my first laps were in the rain um, wow. and a little Fiesta ST, and it was just so much fun. But it was mad. It was absolute madness. And I, in my head, I just thought to myself, I can imagine what a 24 hour would be like around there. And Jesus, it, it's so not forgiving. You you know that if you make a little mistake, it's it's barrier and, and the speed you're doing as well. It's flowing, you know, fast flowing circuit, mad. So, yeah. Have you ever raced it? And, um... Yeah, I, I raced the full season um, in 2015 in the, the VLN. Um, oh, you did VLN? Yeah, oh, I didn't yeah. Know that. The Toyota GT86 Championship. Um, we actually ended up being vice champions. Um, we, I actually raced. I, a lot I didn't do my research well enough. Sarah sacked me. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't. Know, I didn't know that. That's amazing. I didn't realise you had your um, your license and everything like that. It's really cool. Well, that, that was before the licensing came in. So oh, yeah. it was uh, I raced. Yeah, with Nigel, um, which was obviously amazing in itself to team up with with my brother. Because as a lot of people follow me now, I, I look up it, up to him a lot. So that was amazing in itself. But yeah, the the track is just something else. I mean, the, the first time, uh, funny story. Uh, the, the first time I actually went there, I, I used to get really bad travel sickness. Um, and the first time I went there, for those that have been round the North Life or know what the North Life it looks like, um, they know that it's got a lot of undulations. Um, and we were trying to push the car to to its limit to see what we could get out of a full stint. Um, and I was coming around towards the pit lane and the radio would only work when you were near the pit lane. As soon as you got onto the North Life, you, you lost radio connection. So I was coming back towards the pit lane. I was like, I'm, I can't do another lap. I'm, I'm going to be sick. Yeah. And they basically forced me to do another lap. There was no no arguing. So I literally dipped onto the North Life and the first, the first dip, that was it. That was yeah. it. I was on it. Yeah. So I threw up in, in my helmet, all over my suit, all in the seat. Yeah, yeah. Oh. The... Funny enough, my other half has just commented. She come, went around with me, and she actually was sick as well in the woods to the side. Um, she done. I think it was it was literally like say second lap. It's just like a, it's just like a um, a roller coaster. Yeah. Um, and it's just mad. But I think if you're a driver, you don't notice it quite as much. But no. As a passenger, I can imagine it must be horrendous. But it's yeah, you can't have to prepare yourself as, as a passenger, as a driver, yeah. and if you know what's coming up and you can anticipate it because you've yeah. got full input with, with the car. But as a passenger, you have absolutely no control. So, you know, you, you don't know what's coming next and, you know, how obviously the suspension on the car, you know, the, the steering inputs, power inputs on the car. Um, so, yeah, I, I'm not a massive fan of, of well, I to be honest, I wouldn't want to be a passenger around there. So. <laughs> It's, it's not, I, no, no, I, I haven't, and I don't want to be <laughs> just a, a, a no no. Um, yeah, I think my other half feels better for being sick around there now. She knows you've been sick. <laughs> fun, it's fun. Yeah, <laughs> there's thousands I, of people sick around there. <laughs> yeah, it is mad. It's mad. I, I just think that's it's incredible. Um, so, yeah, awesome. Fair play. So you, you've obviously had a lot of experience throughout the years, and um, no, it's awesome. Um, yeah. I said to people just before this kind of started, um, obviously I'll be you know, turning this into a podcast, um, but also I always say to people, um, if you've got anything else you want to kind of shout out, um, please do. I know I asked you before. Is there anything else you want to mention at all, Sarah? I just don't know. You, you might not want to or not, not can't think of anything. If there is, again, like I said, um, let me know and I can put it in my 
YouTube links and stuff like that as well. So um, obviously I'll say before you say anything else, um, please yeah, get in touch with Sarah or myself and I'll put you know people through to Sarah if need be. Um, and if you can sponsor her, definitely sponsor her. Um, yeah. Is there anything you want to uh, say or add? I think I think you've covered most of it, really. But yeah, like you say, you know, if anyone is interested in sponsorship, obviously get in touch. Um, the same with you know the coaching and the instructing. Uh, you know, I'm always wanting to help new people into the sport, whether it be karting, cars, anything. Um, I kind of cover cover all bases, really, um, with the experience that, that I've had. Um, but also, kind of a, a big shout out from me to Racing Pride um, for those. That do you know me? Um, obviously, I'm a Racing Pride ambassador, um, and we're obviously trying to help with the uh, LGBTQ plus community with within motorsport um, ourselves. But obviously, you know, we're we're supporting LGBTQ as a whole. So yeah, big big shout out to those. And um, you know, if you don't follow them already, I suggest going and giving them a follow because um, there's some pretty cool stuff coming. So yeah, definitely. I, and I really appreciate it as well, and I love that as well. And I I do remember seeing that on you know on bios. Yeah, I think it's absolutely superb and I think it's great and I understand, you know, why it needs to be said as well. Um, people need to really understand that they can, you know, come out, talk about this. Um, you know, it's normal. It's normal. It should, or it at least should be normal, you know. It needs to be more normal. And uh, I just think it's great to see that you are an ambassador for it and uh, you're an absolutely wonderful person, Sarah. I think you're amazing. You're brilliant at what you do. You're a lovely person. Um, and everyone should be um, take a leaf out of your book. And um, yeah, I always say it. But, you know, we we all need to be kind. We all need to be mindful of what we say and do, and be respectful. Um, and yeah, um, the world's always changing, and it's just yeah, it's brilliant to see you know what you do and that you're an ambassador for them as well. So I'll put links in my bio as well for that as well, Sarah. And thank you so much for your time. Um, I definitely want to get you on at a later date. Hopefully, um, <clears throat> if I don't get you on later on next year, perhaps maybe when the W Series is finished for 2022, we'll have to see you know, how you got on and we'll definitely do this again. If you're not too much of a superstar, uh, I, I always say this, I, I honestly think, you, for me, you're on the cusp of just going that next level and you've got people like Jamie Chadwick, for example, who has done, done incredibly well two years in a row, um, and obviously Alice as well has run her really, really close. When you get when you start to do things like that, things do start to happen, and quite rightly so. You're just so close to these girls, so people just need to realise. Um, let's say you're super, but you're like I say again, humble person, lovely person. Honestly, guys, follow Sarah. She's awesome. She's lovely, and um, yeah, honestly, Sarah, thank you so much for your time. Really appreciate it. No problem. Go and get some more coffee. No, actually, don't get more coffee. Probably get more Baileys. I think <laughs> beat you up. <laughs> yeah. No, I think it's that time of night where the Baileys uh, can be flowing now. I think so. <laughs> I'm definitely going to crack open a few more beers. And honestly, um, thank you so much for doing it. Um, doing this as a genuinely as a friend and a a massive fan. Um, and I am. I genuinely love what you do. Um, and really really you know rate you so much as a person and a driver thank you so much and um everyone else obviously keep an eye on the channel we're going to get more and more people uh from the motorsport community as well as car vloggers on this uh peak performance uh podcast and yeah thank you so much sarah i really appreciate your time no problem at all thank you have a good christmas thank you too have, have yeah. a christmas and a happy new year go get drunk much. <laughs> yeah. Have a good Cheers, bye. Cheers, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Um, Sarah's obviously off. Um, I hope you really enjoyed um, the podcast. Uh, we're going to try and do uh, more of these in the future. Like I said, um, we're going to try and get more motorsport um, people from the motorsport world, more motorsport women involved in these podcasts. Because I'm a massive ambassador for females in racing. Um, and we're going to get more kind of car vloggers on as well. So um, I've got some other people lined up. We're going to try and do this every two, three weeks, if at all possible. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. Um, I've definitely enjoyed it. If you didn't, it doesn't bother me because I've really, really enjoyed it. I'm only joking. I'm sure you enjoyed it. Um, yeah, brilliant. Uh, and thanks for being online. It looked like we had a lot of love in the socials. If you're watching on YouTube, thank you so much for watching. As always, like, share, comment, and subscribe. And we'll see you again in the next one.
It's so live. Thank you so much for joining us. Peace, love, and harmony. Boom. See you later. Bye bye. Go get drunk. Have fun. Happy Christmas. Happy New Year. Happy days. Irish crickets. <laughs>